Christmas, Salem Fields. Thank you so much for being here today to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Before we get into it, we want to let you know a few things we've got coming up that we would love for you to be a part of. So first, we want to talk to you about Night to Shine. This is one of our favorite events of the year, and we are so excited to host our guests in person again this year. Now, because this event is so popular and fun, all of our spots for in-person guests are full. However, we still need sponsors and volunteers so this event can go off without a hitch. So if you would like to sponsor a guest or volunteer during the event, please visit salemfields.com slash night to shine. Next, we wanna to talk to you about Coco and Carols. This will be happening next Sunday, January 1st at 10 a.m. in the Rubicon Cafe. This is a time before service to come together and to have fun with family and friends, sing some karaoke carols, and have some hot cocoa together. So we would love for you to join us next Sunday, January 1st at 10 a.m. And while we're talking about January 1st, if you didn't know yet, we will only be having one service on January 1st at 11 a.m. So sleep in a little bit later and join us for that 11 a.m. service. Now we also wanna let our students know that signups for Winter Retreat are open. This awesome weekend is gonna be filled with worship, games, activities, competitions, and even more. So for more information, you can email julia at salemfields.com or to sign up, visit virginianyi.com slash events slash winter dash retreat. Now, last but certainly not least, we wanna let you know that the next Baptism Sunday will be on January 29th during our services. So if you have questions about this or you wanna sign up, please email info at salemfields.com. Now we also wanna let you know that our next belonging gathering is gonna be happening on Sunday, January 15th at 1 p.m. Now this is a time where you can come and learn about our vision and mission here at Salem Fields, meet some of our staff and talk about some of our next steps. So if you'd like to sign up, let us know that you're coming, please email info at salemfields.com. Merry Christmas, Salem Fields. Thank you so much for being here today, celebrating the birth of our Savior. Now remember how much God loves you, that he would send down his son to be born in the flesh, to walk as a human, to take away the sins of the world. And that is something worth celebrating. So remember that God loves you today and every day. He believes in you, and this is a place where you belong. Merry Christmas. So lies bursting through No greater miracle Than you Our hope secure Through the blood of Christ The Son of God Who was born to die But death will bow To that baby's cry When he says it is through There's no greater miracle Than
The birth of Jesus took place like this. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. And before they came to the marriage bed, Joseph discovered that she was pregnant. Joseph, chagrined but noble, determined to take care of things quietly so Mary would not be disgraced. While he was trying to figure out he had a dream and God's angel spoke to Joseph in that dream, Joseph, son of David, don't hesitate to get married. Mary's pregnancy is spirit-filled. God's Holy Spirit has made her pregnant. She will bring forth a son, and when she does, Joseph, you will name him Jesus, God save, because he will save his people from their sins. And this would bring the prophetic embryonic sermon to full term. Watch for this. A virgin will get pregnant and bear a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, Hebrew, for God is with us. Merry Christmas to all of you. I'm so glad 
that you are uh, joining us today on Christmas Day as we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're joining us today for the first time, we have been in a Christmas message series called God is with us, Emmanuel, God is with us. And we've been talking about uh, God being with us in the seasons of life. We talked about God being with us in the valley, God being with us on the mountaintop, in the wilderness, and in the storm. And today we're going to continue that series. Now, I recognize that some of you are here and maybe you are doing a church service for the very first time, or maybe you are joining this service because it's Christmas. And we're so glad you are here today. No matter what your beliefs or your background today, you're absolutely, completely welcomed here. Christmas is all about the incarnation, all about God's move into the neighborhood. And there's a scripture that I read for you before in Matthew that talked about that. This idea that God became flesh and blood, became like us and moved in the neighborhood to save us. Today's topic, today's big picture is Emmanuel, God with us forever. He's the good news of the incarnation. God's move into the neighborhood through Jesus Christ, his son. The gift of Christmas Jesus it's not like some of the gifts that we're used to receiving. Maybe you've received one of these gifts today, a pair of socks, some underwear, an ugly sweater, a really messed up tie. You know the stuff that's here today and gone tomorrow? You know, you kind of get rid of it. Either you re-gift it, you retire it, or you return it. So we understand that the day after Christmas, Monday or Tuesday, will be the great return at all the stores, or the great re-gift, right? or you just kind of retire it. Jesus, the gift of Christmas, is the gift that stays with us forever. It's made possible by the incarnation. The Bible says that he will never leave us or forsake us. That's really good news. It's the gift that keeps on giving forever. It's amazing for a lifetime and then on through eternity. Why? Because God is with us. Help me today right where you are there, by high-fiving some people that are watching this with you and just say, God is with us, God is with us. God, not, I see a couple of you that won't get into this. I, I need you to get, just humor me for a second. All right, raise that hand up. Yeah, yeah you, right, raise it. God is with us, God is with us. Here's the deal, the incarnation. What is the incarnation? I, I kind of gave you the Twitter version of it, God's move into the neighborhood, but, but what does it really mean? In order for us to clearly define uh, this uh, in a way that everyone would understand, I decided to go to the source of all wisdom and knowledge, Wiki, Wikipedia, right? So I went to Wikipedia to determine what exactly is the incarnation, and Wiki defines it this way, and we all know that Wiki is always right except when those pop-ups come up asking you for a donation. I hate those pop-ups. Here's what it says. In Christian theology, the doctrine of the incarnation holds that Jesus, the pre-existent divine logos, koinia, Greek for the word, and the second hypothesis of the Trinity, God the Son, and the Son of the Father, taking on a human body and human nature, was made flesh and conceived in the womb of Mary, the Teochus, Greek for God-bearer, mother of God. The doctrine of the incarnation then entails this, that Jesus is fully God and fully human in two natures joined by hypostatic union. Now, I know that made perfect sense to you. I mean, I can't even pronounce some of those words. They're, they're so crazy. Let me just define the incarnation this way. The cornerstone of the Christian belief in this way, the incarnation, God's move into the neighborhood, is when God became flesh in the person of his son, Jesus. John's gospel in John 1, 14 says this. The word was first the word present to God and God present to the word. The word was God. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We'll talk about this a little bit in a second.
Before you set the edge of time Foundations of the earth and sky You saw it all and said that it was good The joy was set before your eyes You knew that you would give your life You saw it all and said that it was good Behold, behold the one I love is called Behold, behold the one our King is called The heavens wore, the earth stood Till his final breath he tore the veil The angels sang, holy is his name Defeated death, he broke the grave Our hope returned, the lost are saved We lift our voice in never-ending praise Behold, behold the one I love is called Behold, behold the one our King is come Emmanuel, God with us forever Emmanuel, the same Max Licato, the great pastor and author, says this, God became man while creatures were unaware, divinity arrived. Heaven opened herself up and placed the most precious one in a human womb, omnipotence, the omnipotent, in one instance made himself breakable. He who was spirit became pierceable. He who was larger than the universe became an embryo. This is how God of the eternity put on flesh and skin and bones. The one who had always existed became. But here's the deal. He came not as a conquering king wrapped in splendor of gold and purple cloth. He came not in some royal processional. He came not in the best hospital suites that Rome had to offer. He came not with silk or ivory or edicts or invitations. He came wrapped in the clothes of the poor, born in the place of the destitute, breathing his first breath among animals of the outsiders. He was born in a stinky stable with hard, cold ground, with dirty hay and cobwebs, and allow smelly animals to greet him. He was born <laughs> out of wedlock to a teenage mother 
and a fiancé carpenter. Yes, the angels announced his birth, but it wasn't to the elite or the celebrated. It wasn't to the rich or the famous. It even wasn't to the innkeeper and his guests. It was to sheep herders tending their flock by night. They call him Emmanuel, God with us. So it's, it's right that he would be born with regular people in a regular place. Here's the good news. The God who is Emmanuel, who's with us, will never leave us or forsake us. He is always with you. His spirit can dwell within you. You know what that means? That means that when you are lost, he can be your guide. When you're alone, he can be your, compa your companion. When you're hurting, he is your comforter. When you're afraid, he is your peace. When you're sick, he is your healer. When you're weak, he is your strength. And when you're dead and lost in your sins, he is with you as your savior. He moved into the neighborhood. He wore diapers. He went to school. He played pranks. He had pimples. He went through puberty and experienced life as we know it, the good and the bad and the ugly. He never earned a degree, no home, no wife, no children, no donkey, not much more than the clothes on his very back. He was a carpenter to the age of 30, and then for three years, he became a traveling messenger, a giver that eventually made the religious leaders so angry that they plotted to kill him. And in the end, in the end, he allowed them to do so on purpose. Here's the deal. You do know that he was born to die. You know, the little baby in the manger that we love to celebrate, that we love to talk about, he grew up, lived, but he was born to die. God, with us, was born to die. Before That means that before the world began, he set in motion the political system that eventually condemned him to death. He planted the tree that would... Um, become the cross that he would die on. He placed the iron ore in the ground that the nails would be formed that nailed them to the cross, and he did it on purpose. He did it on purpose for you and I. Why? Because he is Emmanuel, God with us.
its breath Till that stone was moved for good For the lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angel stood in awe For the souls of all who'd come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born And the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth of old Shall not kneel and shall not sitting in your seat and listening to this talk today, I might ask the question, why? Why? Why would God, who is with us in Jesus, why would he leave heaven, move into the neighborhood, and allow his own execution? I mean, why would he give up all the trappings of being God? Why the virgin mother and a poor carpenter why the ridicule, the beating, the nails, the thorns, and death? Why? The Apostle Paul said it this way. You are familiar with the generosity of our master, Jesus Christ. Rich as he was, he gave it all away for us. In one stroke, he became poor so that we could become rich. He did it so that we could know the God who is with us forever, for too long our sins, our wrongdoings, our mess, mess ups, too long our stuff separated us from a holy God. So in the fullness of time, the ultimate plan of rescue and redemption was put into motion. And God moved in and made his home with us in the neighborhood. Why would he leave home? Because of love. God is madly in love with you with me, with us. The creator loves us so much. He changed everything and he did the unthinkable by coming to earth as a crying baby, living the life of a poor outcast prophet and dying the death of a common criminal. And not only that, but God raised him to life again. Why? Because of love. John 3.16 says it like this. This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one only and only son. And this is why. So that no one need be destroyed. But by believing in him, anyone could have whole and lasting life. 
Some people say God's not around anymore. God wound this world up and he went on vacation. Some people say, well, you know what? God doesn't intervene in our lives and he's not close or anything like that. And he's allowed the world to run amok. But that's not true. Jesus left his home in heaven and moved into the neighborhood, becoming the God who is with us forever. God didn't just shout the news from heaven, but he came to earth and was willing to pay the ultimate sacrifice so that you could know how good he is. Who is he? He's Emmanuel, God with us forever. And here's the good news that keeps on giving. You can be in relationship with the God who is with us. Not just for a lifetime, but forever. See, here's a, here's a reality. One day, all of us will kind of lay down this earthly body and we will go and we will die. But it's not the end. It's only the beginning. And then with the relationship with Jesus, you can know the God who is with us all the way into eternity. So maybe you're with us today and you're having a great time. You're celebrating the birth of Jesus with family and friends. Can I suggest that you take God up on the greatest gift he has ever given, which is his son, Emmanuel, God with us. Pray with me for a second. Father, thank you for the gift of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And here's the deal, Father. On this Christmas day, as we're excited and as we're with family and friends and we're celebrating your birth, today we, um, we receive the gift of your son, Jesus, the greatest gift that's ever been given. No matter where you are, no matter what your background is, today you can receive the gift. So Father, today I pray for those who are listening to my voice who do not know you, that they could come to a place of saying, God, I want you to be with me forever. And so here I am, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Receive this. I give you the manger of my heart so that you might move into my life in amazing ways. Father, thank you for rescuing us when we couldn't rescue ourselves for saving us when we couldn't save ourselves, for paying the price that we could not pay. Thank you for your son, Jesus. The good news is, if you kind of prayed that prayer and, and uh, accepted him into your life, today you have received a gift that will never go away the gift of Emmanuel, God with us. Have the a great rest of your Christmas. Merry Christmas from all of us here at Salem Fields Community Church. God bless.